Hello, welcome to my channel. I am here at Theater Worth, probably one of my favorite places to ride, believe it or not. Um, of course, I love riding up in Cuyuna too, but I have personal attachment to these trails because I was involved with uh, helping volunteer to make them and maintain them and whatever for many years. Anyway, let's talk about what this video is about because it's not about Theater Worth. <laughs> It is about how to use a dropper post. I promised all of you that I would do a video on this. So let's first talk a little bit about the dropper post. It is probably the most game-changing invention in mountain biking for many, many years. Yes, we can talk about geometry, we can talk about suspension, we can talk about all these things, but the dropper post is huge because it allows you to get the seat out of the way for all kinds of stuff, technical riding, jumping, things like that. I come from BMX, as you can see, <laughs> I got the old BMX bike on my chest. So with a BMX bike, we always have our seat slammed down, but a BMX bike isn't really that great for riding longer distances. In mountain biking, we ride longer distances and for many, many, many years, we rode longer distances, but then we would get into technical situations and we would have this high seat post because we wanted the full leg extension and things like that. So our seat would be high enough to get that leg extension, but when it came to technical stuff or jumping or anything like that, the seat was always in the way. The dropper post changes that. It allows you to drop the seat and get it out of the way for the things that you want the seat out of the way. And I'll talk about those here on the trail. And it allows you to have the seat up so you can be seated and pedaling and be efficient and save energy, have that full leg extension, all of those great things. So you get the best of both worlds. And that's what makes the dropper post so awesome. So if you're riding and your bike has a dropper post, and you don't utilize it, you are missing out. <laughs> and this video is going to tell you when you should use your dropper post, how best to use it, things like that. All right, let's show you the dropper post on my Salsa Rustler here first. So here is my Salsa Rustler, and there is the seat, and it's in its down position. It goes almost all the way down. Um, it doesn't have to, it's kind of ideal that you can have it go all the way down, but I, you know, a lot of people out there are like, I want the longest dropping dropper post possible, whatever, whatever, whatever. I'm not that finicky as a lot of people. I think if it can just come down a hundred millimeters, 120 millimeters, that is awesome. <laughs> Gets it out of the way. You can do most things, but everybody's got their own opinion on that. In this case, the seat goes pretty much as far down as it can go on the bike because the frame is right there. So when I push this lever, which is here, and I'm hoping most of you know how to work a dropper post, but if you don't, you basically push this lever here. And when you push the lever, the post goes up. And now it's in its pedaling position or seated position. And so that's basically how it works. When you want the seat to go down, you need to sit down on it, put your weight on it, and then push the lever just forward again, the same direction you push it for it to go up, and then it'll go down. Because I'm holding my phone with one hand, I can't really demonstrate that, but I can kind of, I'll sit on the seat. <laughs> so I'm, I've got my weight on the seat. I got the lever there. You'll be upside down, but you can see it goes down when I push the lever in. Then when I take my weight off the seat, move my crotch out of the way, it goes up. <laughs> so if you are standing, and I just recently did a video on the standing and getting comfortable standing, all of that stuff, that is pretty much a prerequisite to utilizing your dropper post. Because if you're not comfortable standing, when you lower the seat, you're going to want to be standing. You don't want to be seated. So the idea of a dropper post is to drop the seat be standing in your attack position and go over the obstacle and the seat won't be in your way. Pretty much that simple. So if you're not comfortable standing and riding your bike and being in really good control of your bike, watch that video and I'll link it. 
and get comfortable riding your bike while standing. That is probably one of the essential skills of mountain biking, is standing on your bike, being comfortable, being in attack position, allowing your bike to move around and flow underneath you. Okay, so enough babble here. Let's get on the trail and I'll tell you when you wanna use your dropper post and when you don't. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay, one thing I do is when I come to a stop, I always drop the post down. I've gotten in the habit of doing that because I feel like it's much easier when the post is down, I can be on the seat flat footed, things like that. That's not a requirement, but it's when you stop and the seat's in its maximum raised position, you're on your tiptoes. So I always find it nice to just drop the seat post when I come to a stop. Then when I mount my bike or dismount, it's much easier to just get off and get on the bike when the seat's in the down position. Plus it just gives me that habit of always doing my dropper post and just getting really used to it. So that's something I do just to get really comfortable using the dropper post. Um, let's go ahead and get on the trail. So as soon as I get on my bike, I stand up and I push the lever in and raise the seat. Now I'm in this seated position pedaling and for something like this I'll just stand and ride over it I don't necessarily drop the dropper post for things like that um, I won't you know for all of this kind of normal single track riding I pretty much leave the post in the up position so we'll see up here when I want to use the dropper post Okay, for something like this up here, I again do not use the dropper post. I do stand and ride this skinny board, but I don't lower the seat because I don't really need to tuck behind it. And in fact, I can kind of use the seat in my inner thigh to help stabilize me. Now, as I come up to these rocks, I'm gonna lower my seat right here because I got this downhill rock section to do. And the reason I use my dropper post here is because I get down behind the seat when I go over the rock. Now I keep it down and I pedal and I'm keeping it down to go through these turns because I want to really lean the bike into these corners. So I really lean the bike and it's hard to really lean the bike if I got a seat in the way. Okay. So when you see big bermy sections like this, you definitely want to drop your seat and lean the bike. I haven't gone into cornering a lot on my channel yet, but the idea is you actually want to lean the bike more than your body when you're going through a corner. And someday I'll do a video on that. But for now, we're talking about dropper posts. So you drop your saddle and that gives you the clearance and the freedom to lean your bike going into these corners. So let's run through these turns and I'll show you what that means and looks like. So I'm not gonna go super fast here, but I have my post up right about here. I'll drop my post, stand up, tack position, lean the bike through the corner. And it makes a big difference if I can get in that lean. All right, now I'll do it again. And I'm gonna leave my seat up. So when I come into this corner, that seat is totally in the way. Oh, that sucks. Totally sucks. I mean, I can kind of do it, but wow, is that not as fun. When I come into this corner, that seat is totally in the way. Oh, that sucks. Totally sucks. So. I don't have that freedom to lean the bike when my post is up, but when I can drop the, po the seat out of the way, I have 
full ability to just lean the bike into these turns more than my body is leaned. And when you lean your bike more than your body, your bike will rip around the turn. It's pretty impressive. I'll do a video on cornering someday and we'll talk about that. Okay, so now I put the 360 camera away so I can just rip the whole line here. Some freshly made burns. Let's pick speed. Seat is dropped. Lean the bike. Lean the bike. Seat is out of the way. Yeah. These berms are nice and tacky right now, too. Sweet. Seat is still down, out of the way for all those rollers. Ah. Now I put the seat back up and pedal away. Pretty sweet. Okay. So right here is why the dropper post is the best invention ever. Here's a big climb. I can shift into my 51. Well, maybe the 51 is too easy for this part. And just spin up this hill while seated. And I have plenty of leg extension to do so. So climbing, seat up. So this little section up here, I will drop the seat because I'm going to catch some air, especially after this berm. It's kind of a nice little hit. So there's a hit. Here's a hit. Here's a hit into the berm. And then this guy. Ah, <laughs> yeah. So through this whole downhill section, I'm going to drop the seat, stand in my attack position, let the bike flow underneath me. Turn, lean the bike in the corners, hit this nice table, hit this hit, another hit. Yeah. Woo. So I am completely free on the bike right now because seat is out of the way nice for either one of these rolling deals or jumping it you want to have your seat dropped and then over here on the right is your easy line if you just want to roll through but we're not talking about that <laughs> we're talking about why you would need your dropper so i'll go over these um each side, I'll go over this side and I'll go over that side, drop my post, and you'll notice I push my bike forward and tuck behind my seat. And if my seat was up, it could catch, you know, anywhere in the crotch, basically. My pants, other parts that I do not need to mention, and so on and so forth. So having the seat dropped and out of the way really helps you, you know, crouch, get behind the seat and go down stuff like this. Okay, I'm going to take the right line. I have my seat dropped. And as I come through here, I want to push the bike forward and get behind the seat. If the seat was in the up position, that would be extremely difficult to do. And as I come through here, I want to push the bike forward and get behind the seat. So the idea here, when I go down these drops, is that the front wheel is going to drop and I want the bike to pitch forward. I'm going to be standing pedals parallel to the ground and I want the seat to come up between my legs. If the seat's in the up position and I do that, the seat will very likely hit me in the butt <laughs> and cause me to shift my body weight forward which is exactly what you don't want to be doing when your front end is dropping because that's going to send you over the bars so high seats on stuff like this risk sending you over the bars so let's do it right here so i'm going to go kind of slow front wheel drops and there you have it So 
So even for stuff like that, which almost anybody can do, I could teach a beginner rider how to do that. But if I was gonna teach somebody how to do that, I would absolutely want them to have a dropper post <laughs> so they can drop the seat and it would be safer for them to learn how to do that. Okay, now for the finale to send it off this drop. Let's do it. <laughs> nice. All right. Okay, so uh, to recap, <clears throat> drop your saddle whenever you want the bike to be able to move around, either forward, pitch forward, lean back, lean right, lean left. So corners, not like you're just your general casual single track corners. You can leave your seat up. You can actually kind of be seated and let it rest on your inner thigh and you lean in the corners and stuff. But when you're doing aggressive corners like the berms I was doing and you want to go fast you need to drop the seat out of the way and really just rail the turns by leaning your bike so that's one reason you want to do it the other reason would be for something like this to ride down it roll down it and you also want it for jumping things like that so you can pull the bike up, suck the bike in, and the seat stays out of the way, bunny hopping, all that kind of stuff. Excellent to have your seat out of the way. Riding over log rolls, I'd drop my seat for that so I can pitch the bike through and over the log roll, things like that. So I hope this video helps. If so, sweet. <laughs> if so, then please like and subscribe. Peace.